to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone EduPartner Program and massage industry experts. With the continuing challenges facing massage schools, students and practicing therapists during COVID, the EduTalk series supports virtual learning and building a sense of community by connecting you with industry experts who will share their knowledge and expertise for not only class discussion, but career success. Tonight's expert is Anita Shannon, who began her career in massage and spa in the 1980s. By 2001, she was founder and director of Ace Massage Cupping and Meta Cupping. And by 2011, she was inducted into the Massage Therapy Hall of Fame. Throughout her career, she's presented educational workshops, both nationally and internationally, and is a familiar face at national industry conventions before this year. Uh, Anita also has produced numerous comprehensive educational videos and written numerous articles on vacuum manual therapies. And if you didn't know it, Anita is a cover girl. She was featured on the cover uh, as a leading educator in February 2019 on Massage Magazine. So if you have access to that issue, take a look. Tonight, let's listen and learn as Anita introduces vacuum therapy and versatile cupping techniques that mimic massage movements from deep tissue to myofascial release to the light pumping movement of lymphatic drainage. Anita will explain how vacuum therapy cups used regularly have cumulative effects on client treatments that promote significant changes in conditions furthering your client's health and well being. Before I turn it over to Anita, I want to thank you again for joining us tonight. And if in the upper right hand corner, you would select the speaker view. And during Anita's presentation tonight, if you have questions, these will be answered at the end and you can use the chat in the lower navigation bar. And with that, I turn it over to Anita. Here you go. Thank you, Donnell. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Um, it's been an amazing year and definitely I think we're all missing classes and conventions and all the things that really feed us. So it's just really nice to have a half hour to chat with you, um, especially if some of you have never tried cupping or working with vacuum before. It is a lot of fun, number one. Um, I've been having some fun in my isolation, you know, developing some new techniques and things on myself. So it never stops growing. And that's one of the fun parts, especially when you've been a therapist for a long time. So the vacuum therapy, one of the things I do recommend to people before you start working with it is to see a video called strolling under the skin. If you haven't seen it and you're a body worker, it's really a must see. You can see it for free on YouTube. It is absolutely fascinating. You get to see the three dimensional live. This is in a live person, this camera going around looking at the way the fascia works and the way it is structured. When you really understand this structure and you can get that visual in your head, and then you can imagine what a vacuum would do with strands that have become stuck or tangled that are inhibiting movement that travels all the way through the body. So we can have a lot of fun. Sometimes, sometimes you can actually feel the strands popping off of each other. It's absolutely fascinating. It feels like bubble pack. So we're never going to replace our hands, of course. These are, these are why people come to us. What I wanted to do was work smarter, not harder, and help my clients move through issues in a shorter time where they could see the results, where they would commit to coming in and were enthusiastic about doing it. 
So what the vacuum does is it lifts and separates. And I know I sound like an old bra commercial, but it lifts and separates the tissue, lifts and separates the fascia. We can use it to loosen up scar tissue. We can use it to work on inflammation. If someone has inflammation in their tissues by creating vasodilation, we can actually help the tissue eliminate that deep inflammation, even organ tissue, through the skin. So when you are working with somebody with a cup and you see their skin getting pink and hot, stop. Don't overwork the area. That's the biggest mistake we make when we begin is we, we tend to go a little bonkers on people and do too much work. So back off, less is actually better. And you will find that you're going to get more and more results very quickly with a lot less effort on our part. So you can use these in multiple ways. Um, these do mimic massage movements. There's a lot of classes out there now on cupping. It's become really popular, which is really awesome to see. There's a lot of people who at the same time and about 20 years ago started looking at this tool and we all kind of went different directions. So it's always fun to take a bunch of different classes and then kind of meld everything you learn together. Cause of course, none of us is going to be the end all. So if you're being taught placement of cups, things like that, the work from ACE is going to be a little different because we're doing lymphatic drainage, we're doing sports work, and I'll explain to you why you saw marks on people in sports and why we would like to integrate some of the other techniques in to avoid that. I'll explain that later um, of congestion. You can use it for pre and post surgical. It can be as gentle as you want, or it can be really tough and aggressive. Um, a lot of great equipment on the market. Most people do like to start with manual equipment and you'll never walk away from your manual equipment because what do you do if your electricity goes out and you're using a machine? Or you can use them in conjunction if you choose to go to a machine eventually. So I might have two cups pumping away on somebody with the machine, and then I'm over there with my silicone cups, you know, working hamstrings, gas rocks, things like that. So you become multi-talented and you can approach things and do more work in a shorter time. It's really cool. Now there is sets out there, I'm sure you've seen them with pistols and the cups attached and the hose and that's how we started out and we still love all of those sets. You can, I'm sure you've seen a plethora of silicone cups out there. This is one of my personal favorites and this little guy's been with me over 15 years. The reason I like him is this really big mouth on him and a really wide rim. You don't find that in many cups. So this I use in the shower for myself. You can't take a machine in the shower. It doesn't work very well. So this is what I use for lymphatic work, things like that, um, aches, pains, different scar tissue, adhesions, all of that. The shower, it's so much easier. You're already naked and you can use your soap or you can use your shower gel and get everything done. You'll actually take care of yourself. Now, the one nice thing equipment wise we're using a machine is it's easier to work on yourself you just have one hose something else is creating your vacuum and you can just go to town there is a lot of great equipment out there um glass cups are very popular especially if you're working with people with fibromyalgia and again you can tell i like really big cups um, they tend to disperse your suction over a larger area, makes it a lot more comfortable for people. And again, you're not going to get this on somebody's arm. It's too big. But when you've got somebody on the table and you can get one or two of these on their back and start gliding with them up and down those erector spinae and down into that lower back sacral gluteal attachments, there's just nothing like it. I actually, there's a massage therapist that I get work on work from about once every four to five weeks. And he does pretty deep tissue, very repetitive movements. And we're making progress on some issues. But I found that after he left, if I spent about five, 10 minutes with 
cups on the glutes and on some of the areas that are really tight, just having them pumping away, it just took it to a whole nother level. So my suggestion is combine your vacuum work and cupping work with your manual therapies. You want to get in there first to assess with these eyeballs that are on the tips of your fingers and in the palm of your hand and do the work with the vacuum. My hand is always around the cup so that the back of it is kind of feeling that person and seeing how the tissue is responding. And again, our company, we only use clear cups. And again, there's a ton of them out there that are awesome. Um, these we have blown just because we like having these really big sizes. We had a hard time finding those. But you can disperse it over a larger area. You can get over a broad area like the back in less time using bigger cups. And I can increase my suction if I have a bigger cup and not hurt people. This is our big goal. I watched one TV special where they used cupping as a form of torture for people and it was pretty horrifying to see it. But um, I think it was the competition where they had to travel around the world. It shouldn't hurt. It really should not. And if you're using our techniques, you really shouldn't be leaving marks on people. They People get really scared about it. Some people like them, they're very proud of them. Um, we don't leave marks. If somebody gets a mark, I congratulate them because obviously there was something in the tissue that needed to come out. But very rare that people walk away with a mark from me. And I actually work on a lot of geriatric people, people in their 70s, 80s. Some of those are difficult not to leave a mark. So the thing that I like to do for them is pumping movements. It allows me to get into their tissue, do the lifting, do the stretching, do a deeper work, but again, doesn't hurt them, doesn't bruise them, doesn't create discolorations because those are two different things. And just for a little fun thing, this is the little machine I use, it has a gauge on it, and then it lets me set my time for suction and my time for release. So I can actually go on a straight suction and just go right up the arm. You will need lubrication. I put oil on before we started. And then you can do pumping. So as you can see, this is doing the work for me. So if I'm moving up the lateral leg along somebody's IT band, especially an athlete, cyclist, karate, all kinds of you know, martial arts, you want to do the pumping movement first, or you might get hurt. Um, they might kick you. So really work up along that lateral leg, both sides, the TFL, IT band, all the way up into that hip from the knee up. Try pumping first. If you go along with a glide along someone's lateral leg, especially an athlete, like I said, you, you might get kicked. It'll be involuntary. It'll just be painful for them. We don't want to tear tissue. We want to gently release it. And if you look at the motion of a cyclist, you know, that is why all of the fascia on the lateral leg just gets knotted and tied down. A lot of it is also dehydration. If somebody's not even an athlete, but they just don't take in any fluid, you might be dealing with severely dehydrated tissue. And if you try to do a glide on that, especially to stronger suction, you could hurt them and it could actually do damage to the tissue. So for me, kind of rule number one is start out with that pumping mode. And the neat thing is you can adjust it however you like. And you can do this with the manual cups too. You're just going to be doing a squeezing. And that's how you would do pumping on somebody. It takes a while to master these things. If you haven't gone to a class or had an opportunity Try it on yourself and have fun with it. You're gonna laugh a lot. But you can do a longer suction and a short release. And again, you can move it every time it releases. 
really nice around joints, elbow. And if you didn't see this cup, it's got like a curve to it. It has a curved rim on it, which really makes it easy for getting around joints. So when you're looking for equipment to use, look for variety, versatility. Um, look for something that offers you, we can't do it with manual. You can do it with two of the silicone cups with the pistol and the other cup, you can't do two cups at once. But if you have this hose, it's a bifurcated hose. So you can do two cups at once, dueling cups, all kinds of fun stuff. So if you have questions, you can always contact us. We're always happy to help. If you find some equipment, you're not quite sure about it, and we're happy to help with that. Um, movement wise, did show you the gliding, the pumping. We do all kinds of movements that would do cross fiber work called scooping. We do rolling rotation, reverse friction, different things like that, depending on the cup size that you use. If you use this really teeny, teeny little cup, and I'll bring it to my face so you can see how tiny that really is. This you would be working on scars, things like that with a good, good strong vacuum. The other thing is working hands and feet. Very often we don't understand that people have a lot of pain in their hands and feet or they just forgot to tell us, which is what I find mostly when I get to somebody's feet and I start working and they, they let out a, a little yell or just say, wow, you know, it's better, that feels better. So along the hand, you can use these and really get in on scar tissue. If you've got uh, contractions, different things in the hands or the feet, you can actually get in there, park your cup, this is another movement, and then manually, you're going to stretch their fingers. It's hard to do on yourself, except with the machine, but sometimes your cup will pop off. So look at this in a dynamic way with the movements too. You could park a cup on somebody's shoulder or on your own, and then just do a rotation. This is a lot of what I do in the shower. If my traps are really bothering me, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, there goes the cup, goes on there, and then I do all kinds of movements for myself. So if you haven't tried this before and you're interested, um, there are some videos out on YouTube, things like that, where you can get a little start. Try on yourself first, see if you really like it. Then take the equipment in and ask a few good clients to give you feedback on it. The one big thing though is we are an education company we're here doing an educational talk. So I do want to say before you really integrate this into your practice, please, please, please take a class. Number one, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, which is a big deal. It took many years for us to develop all the movements and, and put this whole thing together. Why work so hard? And all the other classes that are out there, take as many as you can. Um, I also take adjunct classes. Right now I'm, I'm journeying through anatomy trains again because it's been way too many years. And that is assisting me with some of my other myofascial work I'm studying. So again, our education is the most important tool in our toolbox, not our cups, not our machines, not anything. It's our knowledge, our education and question everything. If an educator tells you something, they're saying it in good faith, but look it up. I mean, even if I tell people in my class, whatever I say to you, look it up. If you have any questions about it, ask me or do some research on it. But the classes are really imperative before you start working on clients. I did horrible things to people when I started out and was developing this. Um, I was still using fire cups, um, didn't really know there was other equipment out there, just did horrible things to people. Um, they were very kind, my clients knew I was trying to develop it. And a lot of my friends sacrificed themselves for that. So one other thing I do wanna talk about, um, I do wanna talk about congestion. The one thing I mentioned when you leave a mark on somebody or you leave a cup sit up to 15 minutes, in Chinese medicine, they're doing that for a different reason than body work. 
and that I, the only reason I know that is I worked in an acupuncture clinic. Um, what we're doing is we want to eliminate congestion. So if somebody has stagnant length, like around the top of the knee, I've realized lately for some reason, maybe because I'm on the computer so much, I'm getting a lot of lymph above my knee. So I've been using the vacuum to move that out. That is one form of congestion. A lot of women around the midsection, you know, especially after menopause, we just start blowing up. That for a lot of us is lymph. If you have gastrointestinal disorders and inflammation, um, colitis, any kind of irritable bowel syndrome, all of that, you're going to have a thickening of the lymph on these people. So you can clear that congestion. The other one is blood congestion. And this is why people turn colors. Um, people turn anything from gray to yellow, um, green. I saw green once. Um, bright yellow all over their body once. This person, we had worked around their liver and when she called her mom, her mom did let her know that as a baby, she was severely jaundiced and they thought she was gonna die. She was in her twenties. We had her in a class and she just turned bright yellow after the partner work. So we became very concerned, wanted to know where that came from. That's what it is. It's old stuff, old medication, old smoke. If you were around a lot of campfires, you smoked cigarettes, you had a coal furnace. I don't think they have those anymore, but some of us remember them. We might see gray color come up in your lungs in different areas. Congestion can also be blood congestion. Um, I've been in a large number of car accidents since I was five years old. For some reason, I attract cars plowing into whatever one I'm riding in. So, um, if you work on my neck, there is a possibility I'm going to turn a purple or black. I doubt it because I probably worked on it so much it's all out of there. But if somebody turns a really dark black color, that's something that happened very early on in their life. That's very, very old blood. In some people, you can actually see a pattern when it starts showing up. It, it's truly amazing. Smells will come out of people too. So just be careful, you know, the you're not inhaling some noxious stuff. Um, worked on a person in a class that had been a baggage handler for the airlines and the jet fuel that filled the room as we worked on her was off the chart. Absolutely amazing. That's the congestion that when I worked on people with my hands, I could not liberate that. I could not I didn't know a way to allow the tissue. I didn't even know it was there, actually. I have a feeling that it's not mentioned very much in body work, that there is blood congestion. So this is what you're seeing in the athletes who are getting stationary cup work done on them. That cup is sitting there and it's pulling blood from all those micro tears as they are swimming, as they're lifting weights, as they're gymnast doing their gymnastics. Um, they are micro tearing their tissue. So as we set a cup on there and leave it sit, it's going to start pulling all of that towards the cup. It's just the nature of it. So now you've pulled it out of their tissue, but unfortunately it's clumped right there. So it's difficult for the body to disperse that. So when I do get a mark on somebody, I do drainage to make sure that when their lymph system comes along, it'll take it away. The problem is a lot of athletes are severely dehydrated. So I've heard tales from some athletes um, that it took two to three weeks for marks they got from a treatment uh, to go away. That's not good. That means somebody's really dehydrated. So we've got congestion. I need a sip of water. Speaking of dehydration. We've got congestion we're working with, um, inflammation. We mentioned that deep inflammation can be brought to the surface. So look at the effects for rheumatoid arthritis. And as I said, colitis, IBS, um, all kinds of heat kept in the tissues and the organs. Vasodilation is the key. And if you, again, are leaving a cup sit 10, 15 minutes, it's almost too much. So we recommend that if you're going to park a cup, so we don't use stationary just because it confuses people. 
we park a cup, but we have to move it after three minutes. We can always go back. The only time I have gone past that was scar tissue. That was really, really, really stuck. So I did the three minutes. I left it sit another minute. It was starting to lift and then I switched over to pumping. So if you leave a cup sit with pumping, that's not static cupping. You can leave that there for five, 10 minutes, no problem. Because you're not pulling all the time into the cup. It's not a continuous suction. I hope that makes sense. Um, one of the things we come up against most in body work is restriction, restriction of movement. Here you go to lift your arm up and that's it. That's as far as it's going. So we can actually use the cup to ease that restriction, the pumping mode, all kinds of things, and just addressing the entire structure of what's involved in this frozen shoulder for this person. The other restriction is lymphatic. So many people come into me with spider veins and varicosities and these large swollen legs. And as I'm working on them, I come across this line, this indentation in their upper leg. And very often we find it was bike shorts from the 70s, 80s, 90s, um, tight clothing, spanks, you know, all these different things that people use to compress. So what that do, did for most of them was it kept the lymph from flowing up the leg. It made it most of the way up the thigh and then couldn't get past the restrictive clothing. And eventually it just compressed all those layers. So the lymph just isn't gonna flow anymore. So our success is always in using protocols and using evaluation criteria to really see where somebody's issue is. Instead of just working the swollen leg, why are we going to start moving all that fluid when we've got a restriction the whole way around that it can't get past? All they're gonna end up with is a swollen upper leg and then it's gonna go right back down and their feet will swell up. So always watching through the cup. That was what I was saying earlier is we always use a clear cup because you can see everything in it. The color the tissue is turning, the, is it red, is it black, is it blue, what is it? Um, you can see indentations, all kinds of things. So my one suggestion, if you're going to be doing this work, please use clear cups and don't ignore all of that data on your client. It is, it's really invaluable information. Once you start identifying where the issue is coming from, then you can develop your protocol of how to eliminate that. Um, body contouring, you know, again, this goes everywhere from body contouring to Olympic athletes, whatever kind of work you do, this tool can be used to accomplish what you want to do. And that's, that's really nice. And a little fly just flew by, I think it liked the cup. So contraindications have to be taken into account. If you're working on somebody who's on blood thinners or is pregnant or um, on certain medications like blood thinners we talked about, but there's other ones that you would not want to be working with. All of the information we always take in from our clients. Diabetes and blood thinners, of course, you would run the risk of a vacuum breaking blood vessels. If you do work on somebody, you can use the lightest suction. We don't have to go in there anywhere near full strength. So contraindications, please always look at what this person is bringing to the table. If they have diabetes, do they have a heart condition? Are their kidneys functioning well? If somebody has lowered kidney function or uh, anything going on with their heart, you're gonna be moving a lot of fluid in their body if you're working with the vacuum and doing these kinds of techniques. So please be careful you don't move too much fluid to affect their heart or their kidneys and have that rebound on them. So we've got all kinds of things in the class about safety contraindications. One of the things we've had questions about lately is COVID and working on people who had COVID or how to protect yourself with COVID, things like that. Um, my suggestion sanitation wise is a UV sanitizer. It's just so much easier. You clean your cups, you put them in there, turn the light on, boom, that's it. 
Um, we even have one big enough that we can put our machine in it. <laughs> so there's lots of ways to do this. I don't see any contraindications for working on people who have had COVID, but again, you're going to have to take their specific journey through COVID into account. I would love to see what we could do for lung function. You know, how much scar tissue is in there? What exactly happened to this person? But I'm, I think it's pretty fascinating. One thing we talked about was hydration. Um, when you're vacuuming over the tissue, you are pulling fluids and water, like we were said, blood, lymph, body fluids into the tissue. So you will actually see the tissue respond with being plumper, more hydrated, and wow, it's actually gonna get some nutrition from the blood flow. So you will see, this, this is where this is so good for elderly people. Again, I'm turning 60 this year. So I'm, you know, if I ever end up in a facility, I really hope the practitioners there are doing this work. It can gently help and assist people with postural issues. It can help with atrophied muscles. When I had an injury to my foot and had surgeries and was off of the leg for about eight months, every muscle after feet, I had this little stick leg left. So I used the cups on my gas rocks and did flexion extensions and really worked it with the cups on there. Eventually I got two small cups, one on each branch of the gas rock on the superior. And just my legs really recovered well and are equal. So you can help elderly people. I wasn't elderly back then, but you can help elderly people build muscle by just doing gentle isometric movements with them while the cup is attached. And again, you might, if you're going to use manual cups, use something soft for elderly people, not a hard or rigid cup. Um, there is a company out of Germany that puts out these enormous soft silicone cups. They're just amazing. So you'll find a lot of stuff all over the world if you look. To be honest, the, this practice never left Europe. People associate this with Chinese medicine and it actually started in Egypt and in the Mesopotamian basin and just kind of spread out. Each culture kind of adopted it and used it for its own. The Chinese were just brilliant enough to see it as a tool to be used in their medical structure. Again, their diagnoses are very different from what most people in the US understand. They use the cups in a very different way. But again, the US, we just didn't see many of the immigrants bringing the vacuum cups with them. But if you are over in Europe, you're going to find a lot of people keep them in their medicine cabinet, especially if they have children with issues. Pediatric work with this is over the top. If you've got a child with asthma, you can do amazing things and give the parents tools so that they aren't dependent on you. If their child is having an asthma attack, they can have little silicone cups to work down the back and help relieve the asthma attack. Over time, the work becomes cumulative, even for things like asthma and lymphatic congestion, excess weight, muscular issues for athletes, scar tissue. We actually for one woman um, that had a mastectomy, she was told she couldn't get reconstructive surgery because the mass of scar tissue was so dense and there was no skin left. It took us 18 months, but we got enough stretch in it, even without an expander, where the surgeon was able to do the reconstructive surgery. The sky's the limit, guys. Whatever you want to do with this, you've really got a tool that will bend to whatever intention you set. Um, we talk about intentuition in class, and that is the marriage of intention, knowing what you're doing based on experience, based on education, based on research. Now blending the intuition in that as you're moving the cup, and you see a discoloration occur in the skin, it kind of blooms up as you glide past it. And now you start that, your intention is, okay, let me bring the cup back, you know, and kind of look at that again. How does that marker work into the issue I'm seeing on this person? So I always um, 
this is my my magnifying glass sherlock holmes had a magnifying glass i've got a cup i just look through the cup and that's when i can see what's going on and you'll feel it you feel through these cups you feel eventually they become an extension you don't even know you've got them because you can feel every little nuance in that tissue under there it's really a, a stunning journey the biggest one make sure i'm okay on time oh, well, i just pop, i just popped in hi hi Anita. <laughs> <laughs> i i could keep great. listening and i have been watching numerous chats come in so there are a lot of good questions that you know i'd love you to take a look at and address okay. and um <laughs> yes <laughs> the unicorn technique so um if we if you could you know take a look at your chats or if you want me to read them um however you would like to manage it that would be great Okay, so um, Shireen asks, what, what brand is your bell-shaped shower cup? Oh, that's so cool. Um, we get these out of Russia. It's the only company that works with a natural silicone. Well, there's one more company in Russia, but we like the design of this cup a lot because it's got this really thick cap top and then it's got these baffles in it. So I don't know if you can see that this poor thing is so old. Yeah, now you can see it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes it easier to squeeze. So we've got these on the website. There are a lot of great silicone cups out there. I just haven't found one. Again, what cup is going to last 15 years too? So they are a little more, but these things will never, ever wear out. Shireen also asked, what is the model number and price of the machine you use? Uh, she hasn't uh -huh. seen any that compact. That is the reason we jumped on this one. And we started carrying these machines two years ago. And then the company made a change to the machine. So you, they dropped off our website for six months while we fought it out with them because we didn't like the change. So in, um, they were very kind. What they ended up doing is they developed a program just for us because I, I did not like the program they had changed to. So you can find these on the website. The machine is $4.99. Sometimes we have sales. Um, we are gonna get your contact list. So maybe we'll send you a little, little code or something so you can get a special discount on it. The $4.99 though includes the $120 20, 12 CE online workshop. We don't sell machines without the education. So people have given us a hard time saying your machine is, you know, more expensive. Well, you're also getting 12 CEs and hours of education. Plus, if anything happens to it, we fix it. So that's a big deal. That's great to know. Um, so people can go to your website, which is right by your photograph there, and look at the equipment area. Um, I have a question from Cobalt that um, he would also like to know recommended machines or or do you recommend like do you google or do you know brands that you would recommend yeah um, most of the machines you're going to see are coming out of china so it's hit or miss sometimes we picked two big companies one who produces our bigger machine and then one that produces this one the other machines i really love are out of Germany, um, there's one out of Pakistan, not Pakistan, India, something like that. Unfortunately, they they run anywhere from 15, 1800 up to five, 6,000. And we used to carry ones like that, but nobody could afford them. So what we did is we designed gateway models that were 300 for $350 and then your class included. Um, if you want to invest in one of the better machines, contact me and I'll send you right to those companies. They're absolutely amazing. But unless you have a very profitable practice, I would not over invest in the beginning. Start a little smaller. Um, Sandra has asked, when will hands-on classes be available? Is that something you have on your website? or should they check back? 
Um, we should have classes on the website. We are getting requests for private classes right now, but I know a lot of the educators are going to be posting their classes. Um, this year, I'm going to focus on the shows and do some more videos because we want to build our video library that wants you to take our online class or you take a live class. We can show you the special stuff like the breast work and things like that, that I don't show in a level one or anything like that. It's too, too sensitive of work to show. But yeah, go to the website. You'll see all of our educators there. They're all each extremely unique. That's, that's great. Now, Missy is asking what happens if you cup on top of a visible vein on the leg? If you work around them, will it help them to become less visible? Um, it's, if, uh, it's a two-part question, so let's address that first. Okay. Um, if it's a varicosity, it is contraindicated in massage to work over varicosities. Um, you could work laterally. Um, what I would look at is working superior. Why? does this person have this varicosity? Where does it disappear? Can you find a restriction somewhere in there? Even with your fingers, you're gonna be able to feel like dents and things in people once you learn what to, don't ever work over it, but try above or beside it to drain away fluid, but try and find out why, why this person has it. And they may say genetic, but usually it's only the tendency that's genetic. It's our lifestyle that creates the varicosities. Okay. How do you charge for service, full compared to add-on treatment, by time? What's the average price of a treatment charged? Okay. Well, um, Pricing is different all over the country. So what I tell people is you can either do it as an add-on of 20% or you can just raise your rate by 20% once you're really good with this. Don't, please don't do that in the beginning when you're just starting out and learning. So, you know, what I tell people is I'd like to, even the first time I try it on somebody, you know, I just say, let's see what you think of this. It's a little different. Have you ever had it before? And if I say cupping, of course, they think I'm going to leave horrible marks all over them. So I don't even call it that anymore. That's why you heard vacuum manual therapy, because <laughs> everyone thinks cupping means marks. So I would say raise your base rate by 20%. Do not add any time to your service. You are going to accomplish so much more in that time slot than you did with only handwork. Um, you might only do work on them if you see a stuff, you know, a tough or stubborn knot, or you may do the whole session if it's a lymphatic using vacuum. So each one's different. Each one's an adventure. It's really nice. There's no routine to it. And um, let's see. If someone has already taken your class, is there a way to get the machine? Without, uh, so they just need to contact you on that level. That's Ro Rosemary had that question. And, um, and then there's a thank you. Um, I've taken one and two level courses with Beth Ellen Zhang and would love to take another course or learn more about cupping for oncology and or scar tissue release. So, uh, you know, would you have that on the website as well? Um, specific classes for SCAR or oncology? Um, we don't have the specific classes yet because we're writing them now. We're going to produce them first as videos and then we'll extrapolate out into the live classes. So if you've taken one and two and you want to, or even one, and you want to see some of the advanced videos, we're going to have a whole slew of them being produced by myself and the educators because again we're all so unique beth ellen zhang is like nobody you've ever studied under and she and i are very different i think she's one of the most amazing people on the planet um if you're looking at scar tissue and things like that i would suggest taking a class with garrett or with martha martha is a pta she's she's awesome well, great. And then um, we have a last question here. Do you recommend the pumping technique or stationary 
for trigger points. If it's a particular, that's a good question. Thank you. If it's a particularly painful trigger point, I will go with the pumping, or you might see me go with these little magnetic micro cups. Ah, so you hid micro. those until now. Oh, these are amazing. And there's all kinds of equipment out now, Dolphin, Avazia, all these things that take magnetic medicine to a whole different level. You can use this for scar tissue and just by the positive and negative charges and how you work with them, you can just dissipate things like scar tissue. So you've got a lot of different tools to pick from. Did I answer the question or did I go off on a tangent? Um, I, I think you did both. <laughs> but April would know for sure. So April, contact Anita. Uh, let's see. Um, I was practicing the flute lift last week on a friend. It worked. It lasted two to three days. Will it have, I think, more lasting effects if you do a series of treatments? She had the what? Um, she said, I was practicing the flute lift. Flute. And this is what? Missy Ryan. So it, it just says I was practicing the flute, flute. last week. Glute. Oh, oh glute. It. It's a typo? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, that was great. Bottom that was line great. is will it have it lasted two or three days with a yeah. series of treatments, they the uh, will the effect last longer? You bet. Most definitely. If we do a series on people, the results become cumulative. So people ask me, you know, well, you took 12 inches off of me in this, you know, body contouring series. Is that permanent? Yes. Everything I took off of you will take 20, 30 years to rebuild. Same thing with the glute lift. Um, I'm going to get a t-shirt that just says, have a glute day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the glute lift, the more you do it. And again, if you're doing it on yourself, get off the table with, on the, with them going on both of them and do lunges and stuff. I mean, you can actually build muscle tissue faster if you've got the cup on there too. So have fun with the glute lift. Okay. And then just um, quickly to wrap it up, um, you mentioned a video at the beginning earlier on and someone wanted to know what, uh, what the video was again. Um, we've got two. Oh, wait, is this the name of it stro uh, strolling under the skin? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. That it's, was the one you mentioned. Someone yeah, else. Doc Dr. Gimbarto, it's out of France. It is translated to English. Um, there's a bunch of clips out on YouTube. Um, I would go for, I think there's one that's around 28 minutes. Get through a little bit of the first part. It's a little dry, but wait, wait until you see this. You see water pumping through the strands of fascia. There are actually, there's tubules and water. It's, it's absolutely stunning. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up here, Anita. Um, again, I mean, this was fascinating. I, it, I, I just let, let you keep going because I felt like <laughs> I was learning more and more. Um, people can contact you through the website that is right here in your, um, uh, below your image. You and I, I, I just want to thank everyone for attending and to note that we have some great upcoming edu talks in February on the 9th. We have self-care tips and techniques using percussion, per, sorry, using percussion massage. And that's hosted by Paige Costello. And then in February, which I'd really like to point out to everyone, is February 23rd, strengthening the future of massage therapy pro profession and research. And this wow. is presented by Doug Nelson, who is the president of the Massage Therapy Foundation. So that would definitely be a great one to roll in. And we have fabulous lineup of experts for the remainder of the year. Hopefully we can squeeze Anita back in here um, late year. 
And I want to thank everyone for um, hanging in there with us tonight and um, your interest in EduTalks. Thank you to all. Thank and, you. And good night. Thank you.